Hello, welcome to Meet the Author, sponsored by the Author Event Network in partnership with the Bremerton Public Access Television Station. I'm your host, Guy Morris. Author Event Network is a nonprofit association of local authors who sign books at local festivals, fairs, and events. Our guest today is Rita McCollar, a publisher of uh, Bilingual Books. Hello, Rita. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm very excited to talk with you. You're one of my favorite authors in the group. I always <laughs> love sharing the booth with you. You have interesting stories, interesting books. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become an author. Well, to tell you the truth, I never thought about being an author, ever. Um, in my youth, I used to be a musician. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was an oboist, and I was playing the symphonic orchestra in my city in Argentina. Interesting. Then uh, the military dictatorship came to the country. I emigrated to Brazil. I mm. was uh, planning to stay a short time there, but then I got um, this uh, American cowboy from the far west. <laughs> My husband is still today. Uh, he, yeah, he was a um, Peace Corps volunteer. So mm -hmm. I got married. But what happened is that when I, I wanted to go back and work for the Rio de Janeiro Orchestra, mm -hmm. they say, well, you're a married woman. You're going to have children. You're not going to be able to travel. So I had to bury my musical career. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah, well, that's okay. I mean, this is life and all of the experiences are, are useful. But anyway, after 13 years that we were living there, we have our family, three children, the uh, economical chaos was just uh, tremendously mm -hmm. bad. So we had to, I found myself being an immigrant again. Mm -hmm. But at that time that we, we came to this country, we came to Seattle. And I was trying to, you know, remake my life. And I found myself uh, studying ESL in a community college. And okay. I said, well, maybe I can just keep studying. And then I was accepted at university and really changed careers. I, I studied uh, literature. That okay. was my okay. second career. Well, I, you know, I found myself teaching Spanish language. Mm -hmm. And the curriculum that we were using was pretty boring. I would say insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, maybe I can create something for these kids. Because at that time, and my, my specialty was um, the medieval stories that found their way to Europe via the Arab in, um, invasion in Spain, and then mm -hmm. they spread in all Europe. So I, I knew a lot about the powers of tables and stories. I know how important they are mm -hmm. for humanity. And I say, well, I'm going to write a story. So they will be learning the language as they are inside the story, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. th that, was, that was the idea. So that was um, my first creative writing, because before I have been writing, of course, you had to, you know, write, uh, uh, publish or perish. So I have been writing a lot of literature, um, abstract, you know, articles. I'm publishing the mm -hmm, journals mm -hmm. in the literary journals, but I have never done any creative writing. So that was mm -hmm. my first experience. Interesting. So you actually came into creative writing from a teaching perspective. Exactly. Yeah. I came with these two books. I mean, um, I call them The Journeys of Rosa and Ernesto, book one and book two. And they came with a manual and an audio. So my students were really interested in the story. Yeah. Well, that actually leads me to the next question, which is where do you get the inspiration of the stories for your books? Um, do they come from your real life? Do they come from history? Tell us about the, how you get inspired to write the stories in your books. Yeah, well, there is a different source of inspiration for it, each book because I have a variety of themes. But for this particular one, the, my first one, I wanted to take advantage of the story to show to my students, something about the culture of Latin America. So mm -hmm. I invented mm -hmm. this character that was traveling from uh, country to country, okay. and I say, well, I have to. I I, I need to have uh, an excuse for this character to travel, and then I invented this um, character that was an adopted kid, 
and he wanted to know his origin. He wanted to know his biological family, where mm -hmm. he was coming from. That mm -hmm. is a theme that is very, is very interesting to me because I don't know if you know the story of um, Argentina during the dictatorship, there were a lot of people that disappeared. Many of them were women, mm -hmm. you know, they were the communists, so-called. They ended up in prison. Some of them, they had babies in prison. The babies were taken from them. The women were killed, practically, you mm -hmm. know, thrown in the river from an helicopter. It's, it's a very tragic story, mm -hmm. uh, a very tragic chapter of the story of the country. Anyway, when these kids that were adopted by police, uh, military, you know, these different people who wanted a white baby, when they grew up and then the country was already a, a democracy, they knew that they were this family, were not their biological family. So what happened is that part of them, they wanted to know. Other people say, no, I don't want to know. This is my family, period. Mm -hmm. But some people say, no, I want to know where I'm coming from, who is my mother? My mom, my mother is, is, my mom is dead, but my grandmother maybe is still living. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a fascinating thing. How the psychology, you know, world was so, so different for one people and the other. Right. So this was kind of like a, the um, idea for this character. He wanted to know where he was coming so from. So he was so, searching for his roots. Exactly, wow. exactly, exactly. It was searching for a word. So, of course, I make it very difficult for him <laughs> so I can make him travel to different countries. So, well, I had a book ready and I thought that I had a book ready. So that time, um, my husband and I were invited to do a voluntary work for Care International in mm -hmm. the jungle in Ecuador. Okay. When we were there, um, we were kind of like hunted by some uh, indigenous people. I said hunted because they are not hunting anymore, but they were waiting for tourists, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was in a cash machine and this woman uh, approached me. We ended up spending the night in their uh, settlement in the jungle. Okay. It was a very interesting night. And after that, they... Um, talk to us about what happened in the jungle. And what happened is that these uh, oil, big oil companies have been exploding the place and have been uh, contaminating the area for decades. Mm -hmm. The last one mm -hmm. was Texaco. Yeah. So many people got sick. Many mm -hmm. people had to emigrate to leave the place. They, they didn't have a, their place yeah. to live anymore. It was contaminated. Um, and at the same time, I met another person who had made this trip to the United States. He, uh, she was um, young, and how do they come from Ecuador? They come in a boat, mm -hmm. a migrant okay. boat with okay. the smugglers go to um, Guatemala, and then they start to come to the United States by land, mainly with the so-called death uh, train, mm. el tren de la muerte. They go and ride on top of the train. Well, I said, that is a wonderful story. I have to share this with people. The, the uh, travel, um, the way, and the reason why these people are living in the jungle. Right, right. And also, you know, uh, what's happening with the jungle. And I started to work in the second book. And then my husband said, well, your first book, which is about Ernesto, you may like to have um, a female character. So mm -hmm. I have this idea of putting the two plots together and they are interspersed, the, okay. the characters. One was, uh, I call it Rosa, the other was, was Ernesto. So I ended up with a double plot. Got it. Which I, you know, these are these two books. And my students like it. So you're dealing with themes of finding your roots and your cultural heritage within Latin America, and then you're also dealing with um, the tragedies that are besetting Latin America and forcing them to immigrate from their homeland. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that was something very near to my heart because I was always very interested in the landless people yeah. in any place in the, in the planet. 
And we know from recent news that the, the troubles with Exxon and te, uh, Texaco in Ecuador have continued. Continue with and, Chevron. And Chevron and others. And they're, tax, they're still yeah. basically destroying the land and, yes. and pushing people yes. out. Yes. Yeah. Even today, even it's, today, it's still a guy, problem. there are 900 open pits that are leaking oil and they're contaminating all the affluence of the Amazon, even as we're speaking. Wow. Yeah, I have some film that I, because I obviously mm -hmm. why I was there doing that. But anyway, to, to make it short, um, then one of my students said, well, senora, <laughs> they said, your book is very interesting. Why don't you make this reader, it's called a reader, you know, mm -hmm. a progressive reader, into a normal novel for the general population? Well, I said, well, that's a good idea. So I dedicate you all my summer to um, ameliorate the language because that mm -hmm. was a language for students, right? Not for mm -hmm. a native speaker. Okay. So I ended up with a, with a novel. At that time, I didn't have any idea of how to approach any uh, uh, editor. Somebody told me to, um, to contact somebody in Spain, uh, Pearson, Pearson Education. And well, I sent an email to them and they were not interested. But a year after, a year after, I received an email saying, well, we are open for submissions. Now, why don't you send your manuscript? Mm -hmm. And I did. Okay. And they published it. So it was very surprising for me that, you know, I just reached one yeah. <laughs> publisher. And it, and it get into the name was uh, the um, El Encuentro was my Spanish book. Mm -hmm. that got a prize here in the International Latino Book Award. And that book sold thousands and thousands of copies in Spain and in Latin America. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. But what happened is that in 2008 and mm -hmm. 9 there was mm -hmm. a crisis, and Pearson closed that department, of fiction department. Mm. So they gave the rights back to me, and I decided to do the English the English version, the with the help of my family, who they are native speakers of, mm -hmm. of English. So that was the... So that was the beginning of your bilingual publishing career? Mm, no, I have... <laughs> at, the, at the same time, I was working in textbooks to teach Spanish in elementary school, because mm -hmm. there was nothing. And then I needed a company to to promote, to, to sell them, right? So I created this company, All Bilingual Press, with the idea of promoting this specific one. But obviously, later on, I took advantage of the, the company mm -hmm. and I published some of the books that I couldn't publish from uh, another traditional uh, company. I did on my own. And then lately, we have been offering the service to other people and other writers. So Excellent. we have a variety of things Excellent. now. Yeah. So do you, are there specific themes that you like to write about versus themes that you like to publish? Or how do you differentiate between the books that you write and the books that you choose to publish? Uh, well, there is no difference. There's because, no difference? No. Okay. Other than the textbooks that it was at the beginning, uh, I write whatever the spirit tells me to write. Okay. <laughs> yes, but obviously mm, there are themes that are my, my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. For example, in this book, The Encounter, I talk about uh, uh, injustice, social inequality, oh, okay. the problems of some young uh, undocumented minor that has to go through those terrible experience in those vicissitudes to come to this country. So they're usually they have a social component on my, my mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. The same thing with, uh, with the other ones. For example, my last one, a memoir, mm -hmm. uh, Leap Years, Five Stories from Argentina. It's a memoir when I was uh, on my 20s. Uh, it's kind of like a, one of the stories is a denunciation of the presence of the uh, the British companies in Argentina okay. uh, from the late 19th century until the mid of 20th century. They were there. They were exploiting the forest in the north of my mm -hmm. province, 
it was called La Forestal, and they they were after a tree that were they extract the tannin. The tannin is used for for tanning the leathers, right? Okay, right? Leathers. So once they finish with the book, the, I'm sorry, with, with the trees, uh, they found some other sources that were more interesting in South Africa. So they left, but they left a chaos, mm -hmm. a social disintegration. There was a story about the murder of 600 workers when they were on strike. Wow. So this is a story that people don't know. And I wanted to share that. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't my thing. It's a powerful story. And of course, the other, the other interest is the environment. Yeah. This is why I call this book a story of love, immigration, and, and environmental crime. So the, you're talking about the, the industrialized nations basically um, uh, using Latin America for their resources, but not caring for the environment or the people of Latin America as a result. That's totally true. And yeah. it's not only Latin America. I talk about Latin America because it's, it's the area that I know the best. Mm -hmm. But this happens all over. All yeah. over, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, but you, you're per, um, many of us approach it at, more from an academic perspective. You're bringing in the personal element, the human element of what's going on and how this is affecting people. Yes, yes, certainly. I do in in the format of a, a, a story yeah. uh, because I know the power of the stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, and besides that, I follow this golden rule for writers. Mm -hmm. Don't tell, but show. Right. Right? You have to show what happened in actions, in dialogues, mm -hmm. not telling that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's it, very hard for a lot of writers to do, yeah. but you have the experiences to put it into context and, and the background to do that. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, what was it, um, do you have any new books coming out? Is there anything coming out coming soon? Well, coming out, they're not really new books, but they're translations. Okay. I am going to translate my second novel, uh, which is The Waters of the Kalahari. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of an irony because Kalahari is a desert, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, we went with my husband to the Bo uh, Botswana, Kalahari, like maybe seven years or six years ago. Uh, it was an amazing trip. It's what you call a self-drive safari. And again, that was uh, my interest in that region was because I read in the newspaper in the New York Times one day, there was a picture of the Bushman, you know, walking in the desert, and uh, the article said the Bushmen are being expelled from the Kalahari. And I was, you know, s so interested in this problem of the landless people, and the displaced people, that I said, what, what is happening and why? So I started to research. When I researched that, I said, well, Elwin, we have to go to the Kalahari. So mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why it was, um, it was my second uh, novel that also got a prize for the um, Latino International Book. Congratulations, excellent. Thank you, and, and I want to translate that. And the second is a translation of a book that is here. This is an essay, really. This is, uh, actually, it's my, my doctoral thesis. Uh, it's a, is a trace of Sufi thought in the Book of mm -hmm. Good Love. The Book of Good Love is a medieval funny poem. And I was tracing the origins uh, in the Sufi philosophy because you see with the Moorish invasion in Spain, uh, we got all of this um, philosophy from the East that because the Arabs were the translators, right? The translator mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. Aristotle, from Plato, from Plotino, right, from right. Uh, these people. So they translated into uh, Arabic, and then from uh, Arabic, they went to Spain. And in Spain, you have the Jewish people who knew Arabic. So they were the link between the Arabs and the Christians. But they also knew Latin. So that was the time when we call the convivencia where these three cultures were living together, and not very pacific all the time, but they were exchanging knowledge, and they came with a translation of this immense amount of books that then they you know, spread uh, outside of Spain because everybody knew Latin, you know, they are mm -hmm. clerics, that it was a lingua franca. Uh, so there was, in a sense, the beginning of the Renaissance. 
So Fast. that is what is. But this is an essay. This is not fiction. Not fiction. And well, I have uh, to translate. You, you, you. I love the way that you pull a lot of history and a lot of personal experience. Uh, where do you see your your publishing company or your writing going next? And uh, we only have time for one more question. So. Well, my next uh, writing, other than the translations. Uh, will be a memoir from my living in, in Brazil. Because these uh, two memoirs that I have here for, you know, this one, Mama's Little Bones, uh, when I was six and so from six to 12. From, okay, my, so that's childhood in Argentina. Yes, in my little town in the Pampas. The second one was my youth in Argentina. So I was thinking about writing what happened in Brazil. That was. A totally different experience because I met there a commune, a comuna, you know, some <laughs> ex hippies living there that they portray themselves as seekers of the truth. So <laughs> I was involved with that. <laughs> A totally different story. So that will be my next. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking from, from the way you said that, that they weren't always seeking after the right truths. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were seeking the real truth, but they didn't know how to recognize it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, um, I, I have a little bit of other personal experience about Christian communes in the hippie days, okay. so we'll, we'll try not to blend the two. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rita, this, these are fascinating stories. Is there anything else? Where can people find you online, and how, do, and how does your audience connect with you? Very easy. Um, I have a website that is, have my name, Rita Stura, uh, it has all my, my books, and there is also the website from the company per se is all bilingual press. Very easy to find me. Well, fascinating story, fascinating history. I always love talking to you and learning more about your experiences in Argentina. And these are these are life stories that I think have touched yeah. all of us in humanity in the 20th century and yeah. learning about Argentina and seeing the movies and the reality. And I always love uh, finding out more about it from you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for watching Meet the Author. Come to meet all of the AEN authors during the summer season of events and festivals in Seattle and Portland and keep on reading. Mm -hmm.